Armo, founder and owner of the Stock Swoosh. Melissa, good to have you back here on the show with us today. Not as much movement today as yesterday, uh, but stocks still mostly lower as the U.S. hits another average daily virus case count that is higher over the past weekend, a, a record. Um, and so what are your biggest takeaways from today's session? Well, really, today was kind of a once-off from yesterday. The QQQs rallied a little bit today, but the SPY was weak, which is the ETF for the S&P, and the Diamonds, which is the ETF for the Dow, was weak today as well. In fact, that was very weak. Boeing fell today. Boeing's earnings tomorrow morning, and so the Dow could fall even more tomorrow. But I think really the critical thing was yesterday. We had a sell-off yesterday, and I thought we'd have what I termed a scary sell-off before the election, and I believe that was yesterday. Not that we don't sell off more this week, but we have so many big earnings, particularly Microsoft tonight and a few other ones Thursday night that could move the market. And some of them I think will be bullish and could support this market going into the next couple of days. I think the problem and the reason that the market is selling off, and I'm seeing Microsoft rally here out of the corner of my eye, this we could pop tomorrow if Microsoft is up. But the, one of the things that the market needs is one, a stimulus, and two, it wants to see who wins the election. We got seven days from now, uh, you know, six if you don't count today. So I think the problem is the market is nervous. People are nervous. They are up. The market's been bullish. Some of these stocks have had tremendous moves. Some of them have ran up again to brand new highs. And people want to take profits because they really don't know who's going to win. And not only that, we don't even know if we're going to know a week from now. I really hope for the sake of the country and for everyone's sanity that we know by Tuesday, but we may not. I wholeheartedly agree with you on that. Um, and so as we are continuing to watch the political sphere and the final stages of this election season, uh, we certainly do hope. Um, one huge thing that the markets have continued to watch, of course, is the coronavirus pandemic. And, and with that, we are watching the responses from local states and governments there uh, and how they are dealing with some of these spikes going into next week and the general election, even though millions, tens of millions of votes have already been cast. COVID-19 is still very much the element, uh, the elephant, excuse me, in the room. And with that in mind, how are you evaluating this market as we enter into our who knows what wave this is, if this is still the first wave, it's, if it's a second wave, a third wave. How do you evaluate the market around this, especially watching closely uh, the healthcare system and whether or not it's being overwhelmed in certain parts of the country? I think the problem is that COVID is here and it's not going away anytime soon. And, and President Trump has said this, we need to learn to live with it. What does that mean? It means that we can't all stop our lives and live inside for the rest of, for the, until there's a vaccine, until nobody ever gets it again. That would be ridiculous. And I think the problem is, and particularly I live in Manhattan, I live in New York. Uh, New York City is a ghost town. People have left and, and people aren't even going out really because many things are closed. And even the things that are open, you have to wear a mask and it's not fun. It's not fun to go to a restaurant with a mask on. It's not fun to go to a bar with a mask on. And people are worried, people are in fear. We cannot continue to live like this forever. And I hope that there's a vaccine and therapeutics in the next six months. And if there is, that would be, that would be really soon for something like that. But we can't close down forever. States have to open. New York doesn't wanna open. Pennsylvania doesn't wanna open. California wants to shut down again. And, and I think the problem with the Biden presidency is, is, excuse me, is that he has talked about shutting down the entire country. And I'm not sure looking back, if ever shutting down the country, even though we did, first was 15 days and was 30 days, and it seemed to never end. I'm not sure if that was a good idea, because to be honest with you, some of these people are in dire, dire straits. And as we were discussing earlier with the previous anchor, Congress is not doing anything right now to help those people. They may not get help until February. The moratorium on evictions is ending Jan January 1st, 2021. So that's two months away. What's gonna happen to people? They're gonna be out in the street or they're gonna extend it again. And also you have to think about the banks. These banks are holding notes and loans and they're not getting payments coming in. And there's gonna be a tremendous amount of foreclosures. And don't forget what's going on with commercial properties too. They're not collecting rents from tenants and the landlords are having to pay their leases or their mortgages or they're not paying them. So you're going to see some real serious problems heading into the first quarter of 2021 if some of these things don't get resolved. I do not think that Congress can wait until January or February to come up with a stimulus deal. It's the only band-aid that we have right now to help people out and businesses too. They may need to do another 
another PPP, another round of the PPP to help these businesses, particularly okay. here in New York. It's just been terrible what's happened. Okay, just a few things because uh, we need to jump in there just for a hot second. Um, we do know that President or former Vice President Biden has not said he would shut down the country in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, he said he has said a mask mandate. Uh, he has also continuously said uh, that he is not going to shut down the country. He's going to shut down the virus. Um, so just want to clarify I that as we shutting down the country. I honestly heard him say that once on TV when the last thirty days. I heard him say that he was open to shutting it down. Not that he definitely would, but that he was open to it, depending on what he said, the doctor said. And to me, that's dangerous because Dr. Fauci, who I thought was terrific at the beginning, I listened to every single word he said at the beginning. I thought he was great. But, you know, when you look at the reaction and the things that are happening to people, and me, I'm a business owner. I see how this has affected my clients. I see how this has affected the city that I live in. When you walk outside in the street right now in New York, I mean, you just want to cry. People, people are around the corner in lines trying to get food at churches. I mean, I mean, it is just horrible what has happened to people. The only way that people are going to survive is if they go back to work. Otherwise, the government is just going to support people forever. And we can't, we cannot, we cannot rely on the government to do that because there's too much political stuff going on. So I absolutely heard Biden say that he was open to doing it, whether he's going to do it or not, or whether he wins is a different story. So, you know, uh, you know, I don't know what day that was, but I heard him say that. And that's that's a concern for me as someone that trades the market. Uh, there is a chance we could go down to those March lows if they shut us down again. That would create a lot of panic. That would create a lot of fear. And I think that would be terrible for people's 401ks. And I think that we could possibly break those March lows if that happens. What would create that kind of a sell off? Shutting down the country. So, you know, we'll have to see. Okay. Yeah. Just just want to be crystal clear for our viewers because we do have multiple fact checks that have taken place uh, and that have come back and said that Biden did not say if elected, he will lock down the country until everyone is vaccinated against COVID-19. Um, so we just have to clarify that for our viewers, particularly though, thinking about the Fed and what actions they can continue to take to support the financial services industry that has done uh, an amazing amount of lending to support small businesses in whatever capacity they can. If you are a small business owner, as you were mentioning a moment ago, what's going through your mind and how you can start to bring back employees wherever possible? And is that possible right now? Well, I'm lucky because I'm a small business and I work from home. So if I had been renting a commercial space, it would have been a different story for me especially if I was in a lease, I would have kept going. And also I've been in business for a number of years and I have an online business too. So I was lucky. I was lucky that the pandemic did not affect me, but I see what's happened to other people, people that are my clients. And again, friends and other people that I know about, and you don't have to be a genius to see what's happening across the country, how it's affected people. I think that the PPP round helped people. They should do it again for businesses. And again, it needs to be businesses that need it because you've had so many of those businesses, I don't know if you remember this or not, Brad, you had so many of those businesses that took advantage of it and took the money and they didn't really need it. They didn't really need it. And we were talking about some of the other companies like the, like the Microsoft that's reporting tonight and Boeing that's reporting tomorrow. It's a dual action there. Microsoft really wasn't affected by the pandemic. Boeing was affected a lot by the pandemic. So certain industries were affected tremendously what I do is online ed education, so it wasn't affected like other ones are. But some of these industries could not, may not come back in 2021. Some of them may not come back for two to five years, particularly uh, hospitality. Uh, people aren't going on vacations. The restaurant industry is suffering. And again, going back to the cities and the states and the opening and the closing here in New York, it's 25% capacity for indoor dining, and we're getting into the winter months. How are people going to survive like that? No, it's a great question. And that's certainly one that businesses are evaluating right now. We do know, especially in the restaurant space, that, as you mentioned, lower capacity. And that is all in this effort to try and uh, curb the spread, the further spread of the virus. As we know, indoors uh, and airflow, there's not enough of the overhaul of HVAC systems at some of the restaurants. And that would be a major burden to them spending wise to try and overhaul that in the middle of the pandemic as well. Um, and so there is a, a significant effort 
effort of, of resiliency and showcasing that from the businesses that can make it through this. Uh, but then there are a large portion of those as well uh, that have some serious tough months ahead as we go into the winter months. Uh, and we're seeing that across America, as we know, uh, going into this election. So it'll be interesting to watch exactly how sectors find themselves faring through this continued 